guys, we are here on YouTube and Facebook every week and our new weekly live podcast. I am Miranda O'Brien. This is my partner in crime, Josh Kimberg. What's up? We're here at Clutter Gallery in Beacon, New York. We are, for those of you who don't know, we are a gallery, a magazine, a toy producer. We also have Five Points Festival and we are on the board for the Design and Toy Awards. So there, knock it up. That's what we do. I started the magazine almost 20 years ago. So I've been around toys for a very long time. I want to welcome our co-hosts here. We have CZ13 all the way from England. Evening. How are you doing? And we have the mighty Tanaka. What up? How's it going, guys? Real good. Going well. Going really well, yeah. What have you been up to, Cs? I've been hacking. I've been, like, downloading old video games and stuff and, uh, you know, like, building building things like that and kind of hanging out in the uh, arcades. So that's been kind of fun. That's awesome. What, yeah. what games did you... Hack I'm into. doing like a vertical build, so like I've been trying to look at all the old vertical 80s video games, you know, that had the vertical screen instead of the landscape. So stuff right. like Pac-Man and Donkey Kong and all the all the little old schools, you know what I mean? So it's been fun revisiting that sort of stuff. Yeah. That's awesome. Very cool. Very Hello, cool. everybody in the comments. We all see you there. Hi, everybody. Welcome. Thank you for coming and checking in. And Drop us a line in the comments here if you're watching after replay, replay crew. Hello, welcome to Clutter Live. Please ask your comments. Well, if you want to ask questions for next week too, throw it in the comments and we'll get to it if you're watching on replay. So, yeah, right we, on. we're busy here getting ready for our next gallery show, Rainbow Sparkles, next weekend. Yes. We also have a show with Jag, just another glass blower. So, keep an eye open for that. Very exciting. And so today's going to be a special episode. We have a good friend. You're going to introduce him in a, in a minute. I know a lot of people here, they're excited to meet our special guest. I won't say who it is yet. In case, they don't in case you haven't been following Instagram, <laughs> you have no idea why you're here. But uh, thanks for tuning in. Yeah, we're excited. Miranda also has big personal news that she wanted to show off on this episode. I, I don't know how I'm going to show that off. You don't know how you're going to get your leg up? No. This high? I got a book come out. Toy cam. <laughs> toy cam. Yeah, where's, do you have the it's toy cam work. up and running? No. Oh, uh, well, maybe uh, uh, we should get the toy cam up and running. The tattoo. Miranda's tattoo. Yeah, I, I got a tattoo, and it's really she, cool. She got a really cool tattoo. By Mashcow. So, you should check him out on Instagram. He's red. You'll at Mashcow. If you can guess which one's mine, maybe I'll give you a special prize. And in this episode, if you stick around to the end, we're going to show a sneak peek of a new toy that you've never seen before. So yeah. stick around to the end of this episode. And we're giving away a rare Sket CanBot this week as well uh, to everyone who will we'll pick it from people who uh, post in the comments on this YouTube video. Yeah. So live or afterwards. Yeah, we have, we'll we have lots happening week. this episode. Okay, so everyone's waiting. Yes. So without further ado, I don't think that our next guest really needs an introduction, but here we go. He's a pioneer of the designer toy industry, graffiti writer, art director. He's lived a thousand lives and seen this world from all sides. I've personally known him for about 20 years and we've worked with him on many projects from magazine interviews to pop-ups, gallery shows, hangouts in holiday camps and castles. We even produced ads for the WWE with him in a previous life. That's and I've seen far world. too much John Cena's face than I ever <laughs> need to see. Maybe we'll talk about John Cena today. <laughs> More recently, we've collaborated on toy production, and he's had eight Cambot colorways with us already. And there's more in the line, plus the Blind Box series. So stay watching for a sneaky peek of a new one. His name is Sket One. And so let's learn his toy story. Let's welcome. Skip one, here he is! Yay! Hello, Hello. Hello Skip one. What up? How What's are you doing? On? Good. How's everybody? We are okay. getting into the groove. We're Great. Good. Great to see you. Very nice. Hello to uh, CZ and Mighty. Hello. Nice to see you guys. You too. Because actually, you this is probably the first time I actually have got to uh, talk to CZ. Yeah, not, it is really good. not through typing. So, <laughs> yeah. oh, really? That's yeah. awesome. That's awesome. That's because so, you've been out in LA for so long now. Yep. 
I've been out in LA and recently moved to Las Vegas. Yeah, that's I had wild. to get out of LA. I needed a change of pace. So wow. uh, yeah, moved to Las Vegas. All right. Well, for those people who are just jumping in here who don't necessarily know who you are, let's go backwards first and talk oh, about man. You want to go the all beginning. The way back? <laughs> you want to go all the way back to the all beginning. All the way back to so the, I, early, the early 2000s. Before that, let's go way back. Let's go all the way back oh, to the man. beginning of life. <laughs> <laughs> I, Because I didn't know until this week that your dad was an executive producer or a producer at Atlantic Records. Yes, he was. I didn't How know did that. You, how did I, you was just, I listened to a podcast. Oh, okay. Yeah. 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 He so was. That's, that's super interesting. I've known you for this long and didn't know that. But it explains yeah. all the music. So uh, I, I was born in New Haven, Connecticut. And I lived, I moved to, from that area down to Stanford because my father's work. Uh -huh. So my father was an executive producer for... Atlantic Records um, during the 70s and 80s. He worked with bands like Led Zeppelin. Uh, they're from uh, like my pretty much my hometown, Led Zeppelin. Yeah. My black country, like pure. Yeah. So, yeah, have you been to Walsall? What's that? I've been to Birmingham. You've been to Birmingham. Yeah. But have you been to Walsall? Uh, I don't think we went to Walsall. Did you like, actually go in? No, no we I saw, didn't. Anyway, anyway. I know I've been all over England. Small, small, small towns. Yeah. I've, if, if, I didn't stay there. I went through it. At least that's yeah. how I feel when I look at England. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Um, uh, money grabbing, gun waving, New Haven. Isn't that what you called it? On the pistol podcast? waving, money craving, New Haven. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> New Haven is an interesting place because I love when people refer to Connecticut because they think of Martha Stewart. That's the first yeah. thing they think. Yeah. Of. Connecticut, Martha Stewart, and rich yes. people. Yes. And I'm like, nobody knows New Haven or Hartford or Bridgeport even. That's, right, uh, right. Uh, all the cities of Connecticut are probably more dangerous than some of the boroughs in the city, New York City, sorry. Yeah. So, um, so yeah, I was traveling back and forth on the train. My mom and dad divorced, and I got to the age where I would take the train from New Haven to New York on a regular basis, which... Of course, at like in the early '80s, graffiti, breakdancing, hip hop, all of that was just just hitting me over the head. So mm -hmm. um, I got into all that DJing and everything at an early age, and um, graffiti is the one thing that like kind of stuck with me. So, that, where did the name Sket come from? What does it mean? So Sket was given to me by my buddy, Jimmy Myers. Um, he's actually a Bridgeport cop now. Oh, interesting. <laughs> um, he actually wrote, used to write Sket. And at the time, I think I was writing Maz, which is funny. Yeah, that's yeah. funny. <laughs> and uh, um, because I dropped, I was writing Maze, but it seemed it's such a typical graffiti name. I dropped the E, but he would... Um, I did a piece for him and um, I really liked the way the letters connected and the piece flowed. And I was like, you know what? You barely like do graffiti. So is it okay if I take the name? And it comes from the first four letters of sketch. So uh -huh. it's, not really, it's not really intricate or anything like super deep down. But um, yeah, so I started writing sketch and that was probably about 1986, I'd say. I'd start writing it. That's, so did you always do art from a very young age Is it like, or you always drew like? Um, yeah, I definitely. So back to my father, um, he would bring home records and record covers, of course, and logos, you know. So as a kid, I think a lot of us did this. We drew the logos of the bands mm -hmm. that we dug and stuff. Yes. So at the time, like I was really liking Boston and Led Zeppelin and ACDC and um just a lot of classic rock right now you know bad company stuff like that yeah so i would be drawing those logos and uh i remember i was heavily into the straight cats so that cat logo um yeah was like super big i i could draw that like without even looking at anything you know and um graffiti just came natural to me so i just moved on to graffiti and uh, yeah, I was always drawing 
always interested in, in drawing. It's funny because it was like the place you would you, you would go to escape regular life, you know. But we have so many things that do that for us now. It's actually nice to be in regular life rather than to escape. So that's true. That's true. <laughs> that's true. So yeah, so um, I started graffiti and uh, um, I was doing graffiti for a while. And then let's see, music kind of went hand in hand with my artistic career um, because, you know, uh, the rave scene came around mm -hmm. and uh, I got heavily into like clothing and designing clothing. So I, I started to like dive into like silk screening and learning how to screen print and learning about separations and, you know, stats and all these, you know, graphic things and stuff like that. And I love the process of, you know, bringing something from paper to, uh, uh, you know, clothing, something yeah. tangible. So I was doing that for a while. And then uh, my wife got, my ex-wife got pregnant. So I had to get a real job. So I went and got a real job. But life happened that, in the middle. Yeah, that, 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 that's that's a common. Sounds kind of normal, right? Yeah. But it, it seems to be life normal. life kind of just hits you. It's like, all right, stop fucking around. Come on. Yeah. It's funny. So I ended know. up getting a job at a sign shop, oh. where, um, of course, you know, lettering and doing graffiti, and but I was brought in to actually pump neon. So I um. I learned how to pump neon and I started to learn how to bend neon. Ah. And then uh, the owner of the sign shop kind of pulled me out of the neon shop. And he was like, I could, I noticed your bench and it's drawn all over, you know, and are, are you an artist? And I was like, yeah. And he was like, I need you in the graphics department. And I was like, okay, I guess I'm going to do graphics. So, nice. and it's, I started doing like patterns and, you know, uh, basically hand painting, you know, stuff. So the sign installers could basically prep the wall and paint. And I would go on installations and stuff like that. And then computers came around and that was it. You know, they were like, sit down, learn this program, learn how to cut vinyl and all that kind of stuff. And that's what really got me into like um, computers and learning programs and uh, every time a new program came out, I wanted to learn about it, whether it be 3D programs or, you know, Illustrator, Corel Draw, whatever it may be. I was just like, I want to learn this. I want to get, you know, I want to get knowledge about how all this stuff works. So, yeah. So then I, I actually stopped doing graffiti for about, I want to say six or seven years because I just concentrated on learning uh, printing and graphics and typography and just everything in the design world that I can learn. And I got a job at a marketing firm from the sign shop. So, right. Um, yeah. And that's where, well, we did some work that you mentioned, which, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> which when you mentioned that, I totally forgot that. Right. I think that's the first place that you and I met. Totally <laughs> forgot. Well, I, I met don't know you. If I, no, I met you. Or or. Yeah. Oh, we were at, you were at concrete? concrete? I was yeah. drunk. Yeah. I was drunk. Probably at the Billy Bananas. I think we all probably. were. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I was probably at the Billy Bananas. Probably, thing. yeah. Oh, yeah. were you at that opening? Everyone yeah. was at that opening. Everyone, okay. Hey, man. <laughs> you just don't remember. Everybody yeah. was there. Yeah, God. yeah. Everybody, Everybody was, was there. there. What was it? WWE stuff or something? What, oh, yeah. 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 We yeah. suckled on the teat of WWE for a two? year or two? Yeah. <laughs> a lot of banners. Right, what's funny right. is no what's I'll tell you a funny story about okay. WWE. So uh before all of this, before I got my job at uh the marketing firm, I was trying to get a job at WWE because they're located in Connecticut. Yep. And I had a headhunter trying to get me the job. And then I had a friend of a friend that worked there. So I was just I was just doing everything in my power to get in there. And I got the interview and I did not get hired. So I was super bummed, but I got hired by the marketing firm mm -hmm. that I ended up working for um, probably like a couple weeks after. And then after a month of working there, 
they're like, oh, we're going to bring you in on this logo redesign for this uh, big company. And I was like, cool. All right, go. And uh, it was WWE. <laughs> <laughs> the lady who interviewed me actually was in the meeting of when they bought WCW. Mm. And we were going to redesign the WCW logo for WWE. So I actually had, um, I was actually heavily involved in that logo uh, rebranding and yeah. stuff. That's I don't know if you remember that. If you'd have worked at WWE, you probably wouldn't have worked on that at all because they asked us to do a marketing firm. Yeah, like, yeah, no, I, I definitely wouldn't have. I probably yeah. would have just got stuck doing, you know, web graphics or TV yeah. graphics or working on T-shirt graphics or something mm -hmm. like that. Yeah. But um, it was just funny that I, in a roundabout way, I still ended up working on <laughs> WWE. Yeah. yeah. I was, I was kind of tripping on that. It was meant to be. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, that, that project that you mentioned, I totally forgot about that. Yeah. <laughs> We've lived many lives at this point in our lives. That's when like Flash was God. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, it was. Ugh. It was definitely before Web3. Yeah. <laughs> imagine, like, imagine somebody sitting down to you and explaining Web3 at that point. No. I yeah. like, All right. Uh, okay. Can you pass that joint? So, uh, I know. Yeah. <laughs> <'Cause>, yeah. uh, <laughs> that sounds really good. That's... So, yeah. So, that's... Uh, that's, I would say that's about my story. Um, as far as toys are concerned, um, I got into toys because of graffiti. I ended up um, being heavily involved with uh, doing a tribute for Vaughn Bodie, who is a comic artist from the 50s and 60s and 70s. Um, he was the artist. He put out Cheech Wizard and Dead Bone Erotica and a bunch of yeah. other comic books that were really like influential to graffiti writers yeah and um so let's see so i was having an event in bridgeport every year where uh, all these graffiti artists would come together and paint uh murals to honor mark Bodie, who is uh vaughn's son mm -hmm. and uh, we would basically just paint comic strips and pieces and all that kind of stuff and through that mark invited me into the city for a show and was like, uh, oh, I want to show you this new toy that uh, this company Kid Robot's coming out with. And I was like, oh, sick. And I already knew about toys. I was collecting, you know, I had some like Bear Bricks and some random Michael Lau bootleg stuff and, you know, nothing, nothing hardcore yet. And then um, I went into the show and I met Tristan that night. He brought the sample of uh, the Kid Robot Cheech Wizard. It was literally a prototype. And uh, yeah, I was like overwhelmed. I was like, holy shit. Oh my God. Like, look, this is like, it's a Cheech Wizard toy. It's a toy that has to do with like shit I'm into. And, yeah. <laughs> and yeah. then like talking to Tristan and stuff, Tristan was like, I don't even know how Tristan, how old Tristan was. He might've been like 18. Yeah. I don't know. I feel like he was like a little kid. Um, he was young. Yeah, I, think I don't remember his age. Yeah. Anyways, so he like handed me a, a CD and he was like, here, there's a couple of templates on here. And it was of uh, the Dunning and uh, Toro, which um, he later uh, put out some uh, uh, different version of Toro under Thunderdog. But yeah. um, uh, he gave me the Dunny template. I went home. I like illustrated like six or maybe eight different versions of the Dunny. And I sent it to him. I was uh, selected to be in Dunny series one. And that's, that's really it, you know? And, and how, did it, how did it feel when you held that first Dunny in your hand after you designed it and it was produced and you'd gone through the whole thing? Well, it was weird. Tristan had a show with Jeff Soto on the Lower East Side um, at a gallery. Mm -hmm. And I went in for the show. And uh, he didn't even, like, tell me. He was just like, I got something to show you. And I was like, oh, word. And he, like, pulled my dunny out of his pocket. Oh. And I was just like, holy shit. And I was, like, holding it. And I was just like, holy shit. And he's like, you can't keep it, though. 
like, what? How are you going to hand this to me and I can't keep it? We said he was that. like, yeah. prototype. I want you to look at it to make sure everything's okay and stuff. And uh, I was super stoked. Like, it was just, you know, I think your first toy, um, it's different nowadays because shit, you could just print it out. <laughs> Um, yeah. but your like your first toy, I, I think there's like this, I don't know. There's a little self pride. You're like, Oh shit, I did it. Like, mm-hmm. yeah, I did this. I actually completed this. It's, from start to finish. Tick. it's a tick off your list. Isn't it? And it's, it's yep. a really nice tick, right? Yeah. And it wasn't even at that particular time, you know, kid robot wasn't kid robot. Dunny wasn't Dunny. It yeah. wasn't, you know, it was just the fact that it was a physical object that mm-hmm. I got to, put my touch to so yeah it was super cool super special I'm, I'm surprised we didn't cross paths then oh, yeah yeah because tristan was working for me and kid robot was just around the corner from my animation studio at that time oh okay so I remember, uh, yeah so, i didn't even know that I didn't so know. i tristan gave me one of the first sample three inch okay. dunnies which i still have and it's funny because i i when he gave it to me i didn't really care <laughs> <laughs> I was like into art and I was like, I don't know what this is. And I threw it in a drawer and it wasn't until me and Miranda got together that I was like, I have a Dunny prototype from, I don't know if it's 2000, it must be 2001 uh, or 2000. And yeah, it's, it was really early. And yeah, um, I remember like seeing the first 3d printout and uh, yeah. you know, it had huge ridges in it and stuff mm-hmm. like that. It wasn't sanded and stuff like that. That mm-hmm. was just like, it was still, you know, it was still exciting. And then, um, you know, when they had the release party at the Kid Robot store and, yeah. you, you know, to be at the, I guess, the birth of it in America yeah. was really interesting, you know? Yeah. And to, um, I mean, Cause was already doing stuff and Kozik was already doing stuff. And, um, you know, there was, there was a lot of people... Uh, What's his name on the Lower East Side that used to do stuff? Uh, his name's escaping. I know Kano's in the chat. He can tell me. Kano. What's up, Kano? Mad, <laughs> too, what are, there's a, a Filth? Yep, Filth. Well, Filth was, was with uh, Tris. And um, I'm and trying also, to remember the dude's Maze? name. Jay Kwan. Thank you, Kano. Oh, Jay Kwan. Yeah, 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 yeah Jay yeah. Kwan. Yeah. Um, so right, there was right. a lot of people. And then, you know, Lev was always into, like, weird stuff. And he was doing yeah. stuff. and. So there was a lot of it around, you know, it just wasn't, it was all floating. Right. And then it kind of just, you know, Kid Robot kind of just made everybody like look at it. Right. You know what I mean? So you said that you collected Bear Bricks and some Michael Lau bootlegs. Like, where did you find that stuff? Was it at Toy Tokyo? Or? No, it was, um, I was buying from like random places that were selling online. It was, right. it, you know, it was early in the online days. Do you know where you first saw it or found out about it? Um, I think it was a skate shop. I was at a skate shop. Ah, in boys. That's interesting. Yeah, I think it was a skate shop. In New York okay. City. That's, that's really It might have been New York City, um, but it might have been in Connecticut. I can't remember, but it was definitely a skate shop. I would see, you know, and um, Cause was like, you know, Brian he grew up in the area and we painted, you know, multiple times together. And, you know, he was friends of a friends. We were in crews together and stuff like that. So of course, everything was, he was doing, you know, was going through the grapevine and stuff like that. So, um, yeah. So, I mean, I knew of it and I knew people were doing it. It was just more like, um, buying, like I didn't actually until, you know, at that particular time, I was collecting stuff like Star Wars figures and, right. you know, other random toy stuff. Sure. And uh, I was into comics heavily, you know, still am. But um, uh, I was collecting other stuff. Um, but, yeah, toys, once once I actually, like, started to produce toys, that's when I wanted to learn everything about it and its history and all that kind of stuff. So. So you're the first person in America that I've spoken to who started to collect toys that they found at skate shops. 
because that's how we found toys in England. Designer yeah. toys were in with skate brands, right? They were in skate shops, and that's how you bought them and found them. Not really comic shops. It was totally skate culture, where right? it doesn't seem to have been that here. So it's really interesting to hear you say that. No, it was. Um, you know, um, I was heavily influenced. I was a skateboarder growing up, mm -hmm. um, and I was heavily, like, totally influenced by its graphics and stuff like that. Yeah, so I thought it was so rad that, like, pro skaters would do their own graphics and then be able to, like, skate their own boards, you know? And uh, I just thought that was, like, the shit and there was so many artists within the skate community and then you have the graffiti artists that were in the skate community so you know i think we grew up in a very good time where music and subcultures like skating and bmx and music like hip-hop and hardcore and punk and just all that stuff was like went hand in hand you know what i mean and then you know graffiti and you know, break dancing and just, it, it was just all one encompassing thing, you know? Yeah, and, uh, DIY, counterculture, the underground, like, yeah. it was all, absolutely. And then, like, the rave culture was the same thing, you know, with, like, clothing and uh, flyers and flyer design and, uh, you know, just, you know, everyone, a lot of DJs were making their own music. It's just stuff like that. Like, a lot of stuff was very creative at that particular point in the 90s and, in the 80s and then leading up to like the 2000s so were you into rave culture oh dude so badly like I, yeah yeah i mean the racing in the uk was huge as you know dude. yes it was and i and i know like, like dreams, you know like every fucking flyer on the bedroom wall like we had like dreamscape here and how to yeah. and tons and tons of like mad hardcore techno stuff and I, I, I lived that <laughs> shit for years I, I remember the first the first time i went to england was in uh i'm trying to think of the year i'm gonna say 93 maybe 92 and i went to england and i stayed with a friend's family in sheffield and the first thing i did was i want to know the pirate radio stations i said I just <laughs> put them on i took all my tapes that i brought with me and i just recorded constantly and constantly and i was like there when like jungle just started to like seep onto the radio and yeah, yeah, yeah. I, my mind was blown when i heard jungle yeah loved it so yeah i remember huge tape packs as well like you go to a rave right and then you could buy the tape pack and you open this massive fucking case there'd be like 10 cassettes obviously in there do you know what i mean and you'd have the whole rape in there you know what I mean? Because you've had the, there's a the jungle room, there's a the techno room, there's the happy hardcore room, there's a the chill out room. So like, honestly, it was some good times, man. Really. Good. Yeah, and I remember in Sheffield there was that what was that Gate Crashers? Yes. That big club. Yes. Yeah. I never yep. went there, but I know of it. So yeah. Yeah, I went there. Yeah, I'm sure. Yeah. I'm sure. <laughs> <laughs> I was not. I was not part of the rave scene, which is surprising, but I wasn't. How about you, Tanaka? Did you get into the Brave scene in Manchester oh. when you were there? Oh, my God. So heavy. So heavy. So heavy. I, I, my experience there is like the lights are on, but nobody's home. Like, I, I know I experienced it, but I, I can't tell you any details. A Alex is like a cautionary tale. <laughs> yeah, totally. Totally. Yeah. Blink, blink. Yeah. Oh, my God. You just take all the E. Back, yeah. when, we, back when we called it E. That's, uh, that's how I did. So, yeah. So back to bringing it to toys, I guess all those things, you know, influenced our scene. You know? Kano says, skate with glow sticks. Let me find out. <laughs> <laughs> no glow sticks, sticks, but I can tell you, I definitely had my pair of, you know, wide bottom jeans. I definitely they're, had those. They're all back in fashion now, just so you know. You can go back Real. to wide No, I'm good. I'm good. <laughs> the 90s is back. I'm good. Oh my god! I'm good. So, so uh, that's so how yeah. you got started with Kid Robot. What's that? Richard, that's how you got started with Kid Robot. Was through yeah. and just that's how it started. Yeah, that was a fun. You know, that was a fun era. You know, I mean, you knew it wasn't gonna last. You know, that's the sad thing. Like we all knew it. You know. What What do you think that that was? Why Why didn't it last? Why didn't that heyday last like that? 
because it's the beginning of the scene and then mm-hmm. you know like the beginning of the scene everything is you know hunky dory and lovey and dovey and everyone's like into it and everyone's just positive and you know and every, the, it's growing and growing and growing and then boom egos come into play and then so is it like a naivety do you think at the beginning really like it was just everyone was excited. We were, like, we were part of yeah. something like new, I and you know, <laughs> you know, it was it was just like, you know, everyone was supporting everyone, and da 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 da. And then I think just it gets to a certain point where it's like, man, that person is making out with a ton of cash, and I ain't got shit. Like, you know, mm. what's going on, or or yeah. why is that person getting so much shine, and I'm not? And you know, people start to realize that you know. Not all lovey dovey anymore, yeah. right. you know. And and do you think that social media and access to people changed any of that? Because it used to be that I think when we this industry first started, that um, artists were like celebrity rock stars, and so those like Kid Robot parties or New York Comic Con or or you know Toy Fair back in the day it was like a chance to go and see those people that you didn't have access to. So it was like you had to make an effort to go and see those people. I guess. I mean, you know, the internet, I would say MySpace was around, you know, back then. Yeah. And, yeah. You know, MySpace was around back then. So that was AIM and all those other like messages. Yeah. Different. And I mean, if, if you were around, Kid Robot had a uh, message board. And let me tell you something the opinions, <laughs> the opinions on that message board were just as strong as they are today. So, oh, okay. I stayed off that quite often. We would like look at it and then run away. <laughs> like, oh my god! Oh, was that the old kid robot forum? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Not yeah. as bad yeah, as Sevens, but um, that was, it was um, Skull Brain. Skull Brain, yeah. Skull yeah. Brain was like uh, toxic. Skull Brain was just like I hate American mm-hmm. like artists. Like if you did Western vinyl, you were like the enemy. Yes. You know, the only person that was allowed to probably travel through both worlds was Kozik. That's true. But yeah, we were, us, <laughs> us Western artists were looked down on as like ruining and just biting off the culture. And I was, I never got it. <laughs> Everyone's commenting, oh my God, the Kid Robot forums. And like, <laughs> Kena's like Kid Robot forums. And Jeremy said they were brutal. They were brutal. Yeah, they were. They were. There was. There was no holds bar. It was like people had no problem commenting, and yeah, it was. That was at the very beginning of all that kind of, you know, message boards. And, yeah. You know, interacting with people that you would probably never meet in person. Right, and they had so, no no actual understanding of. They were just commenting things, but didn't really understand how it worked. So. It was pretty funny. Yeah. But it existed. It was a good time. It good was. time and then you know we got to do things that of course a lot of people wouldn't do now like look at you know going to butlins yes yes absolutely you know? a lot of fun you know? we had a blast there we Me, did mad you christy yeah, yeah. i have to thank awesome. mad for that because he introduced us to atp and we had a lot of fun at those festivals is atp still going on no i don't no, think so I, I, no i don't think so unfortunately because they had such a great ethos of marion art and music and they were such music lovers that it was just awesome yeah it so, was yeah we saw some great bands in that little room in butlins upstairs there it was wild yeah I remember yeah. getting kicked well i got kicked out with ryan <laughs> <laughs> i got in trouble i don't remember that what happened um, <laughs> we were doing something that we shouldn't have been do- doing, yeah. watching Portishead. And, oh, uh, yeah. But the Portishead were a good example because, you know, ATP booked them twice to play that room. So they played both nights and then wristbanded it so that everybody at the festival could see them. Yeah. Like, people don't do that. What, Wu-Tang was there too, right? Yes. Yes. Yeah. How great I, is that? They were, like Portishead I, and Wu-Tang. It's like, what? Yeah. I was standing on the side of the stage and like... I think it was Ghostface Killer or somebody ran over to me and said, I need a Sharpie. And I was just like, uh, okay. So I ran back to the gallery, which was in a transformed hairdressers that we took over, grabbed a Sharpie and took it back to him. So, yeah, 
Wild times. Good times. <laughs> and that's how you met Ghostface Killer. Yeah. What, what are you yeah. saying? At Butlins? At Butlins, yeah, Minehead. Minehead yeah. Butlins, man. Yeah. Wow, okay. That's, that's random as fuck, but yeah. I know. We stayed in the little cottages and... Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 What stayed and, in them, but yeah. Yeah, but you stayed there as like a family... Vacation. Yeah, yeah, going oh. swimming and shit. Yeah. yeah. Well, they take that over for a music festival and they put bands everywhere. And like everybody that attends a festival rents one of the little cottages to stay in. And it was just a rad time. Like, that's cool. Yeah. yeah. Uh, Maddo made a Dolby figure, which was a, a little tape deck. I can't yeah, reach them now over there. Right, right. And then so we would make those partner them with an artist and we would run a gallery show at the festival and sell the toys and, and watch nice. the bands. And it was just a rad time. And they were so easy going with us. They would just bring us all the alcohol we wanted. We'd just radio them like, yeah, we need more vodka. And we'd fill up the, the sinks in the back where they washed the hair with ice and just ice all of our drinks. Nice. Yeah. It was a lot wild. of drinking. A lot of drinking. <laughs> ATP wow. was some, no, we're not saying butt land. We're saying butt lins. Yeah. <laughs> butt lins. Yeah. Butt lins. Butt lins, exactly. Aluminium. <laughs> exactly. So, yeah. So, so, what are some of the most memorable projects that you've worked on throughout the years, aside from Dunny's? Because, you know, you've worked on many Dunny series. Well, uh, the guy in front of you is probably uh, my most memorable one because it was my first self-produced toy. Yes. Um, Eggster was uh, my first toy that I self-produced and by the school of hard knocks learned toy production. Yeah. Uh, learned about shipping product over from China and getting taxed beyond belief and uh -huh. uh, learning about uh, the unions and having to get the truckers take care of the, you know, instead of going down and picking up your own product and just learning all the fun stuff and nuances of uh, toy production that you really don't think about until you're into it, you know? Absolutely. And he's rad. He's such an awesome little character. And so he that, goes well with the, is it the book I wrote, the, to the tomato that you made with Weedy Week, the tomato that you made yep. with Yep. Yep. That was, uh, uh, Eggster was my throw up. Yeah, um, he was my E for my um, that I used to rock a character. I used to rock for my E, and then uh, uh, the dude I write with, uh, this dude Eros, he used to rock a tomato for his L. So we did Buckeye Rot. And uh, <laughs> nice. Hannah said, first emoji toy ever, which was something that we were going to bring up. Like <laughs> when you made this, what it would become. <laughs> yeah. This was definitely Skep and his big dick down in the toy industry. <laughs> nice. Nice. And drop my gun, I'm out. <laughs> Perfect. It, was, it had nothing to do with that, man. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, okay. <laughs> um, I would say that. I would say basically any, like, any of my characters that were my characters, you know, those are all big ones. You know, like when I came out with Ripple, I was super stoked on that project, even though it it it, it didn't go as planned. Um, I was super stoked on that. I was super stoked to see Ting finally come out. But I think anything that you know comes from your pen and ends up being three dimensional is is something that um, you know it's it it's you bring in your creations, your creations, your personal ones to life. So um, to see them. Triple, the same thing. So, yeah, I'd say all those, any any of my own characters were, like, big deals and stuff like that. You know, doing a Bear Brick was, you know, was one of those things, even though, you know, Bear Bricks are just starting to, like, catch on now, I guess, in the States. You know, for a long time, they weren't popular at all, mm -hmm. you know. But um, doing one, I don't know. It, you know, it's just like CZ said before, you know, take it off the list. You know, you have these these goals, I guess, as a designer that you'd like to hit, you know, throughout your career. And um, definitely uh, a bear brick would be one of them. But, yeah. Yeah, I'd say, uh, I don't know. Every project's fun. Yeah. Until yeah. something goes wrong. <laughs> <laughs> So, you made the dummy with Tristan 
and Paul. Mm -hmm. And then you were approached to make another project with Paul Budnitz. Yep, I was. Well, actually, he didn't approach me. Huck did. Yeah. Um, you know, the whole thing with Super Plastic was it was it was awesome because I was, you know, I've been friends with Huck for like, God, like, I don't know, 20 years or something like that. So least, um, we've known each other for about 20 years. At this yeah. Time. Wasn't, didn't Huck work at Kid Robot? The store, right? Well, he worked at the at store. The store? Yeah. yeah. He worked at the store as a manager for, I want to say a couple of years, maybe. Yeah. And then he, he went off on his own. Yeah. Um, But uh, yeah, I was approached by, uh, well, I was talking to Huck during the whole time Super Plastic was uh, trying to get their footing and stuff like that. And uh, um, they even had an investor interview me and stuff. So, you know, I could kind of co-sign, you know, Huck and Paul and their investment into Super Plastic and stuff like that. And um, I talked with Huck uh, a bunch of times and he would shoot, you know, ideas over to me and ask me my opinion and, you know, uh, X, Y, and Z, you know, what do you think of this? How's the, you, you know, how do you think this is going to play out? So on and so on. And um, I did Jenky series one where I did a uh, lucky Bucky and I got the chase figure. They, they uh, hooked me up with the chase figure. So I was stoked on that. And then um, Huck was like, I want you to design a, uh, um, an eight inch janky. And of course, the first thing I always ask is, can I fuck with the shape? Because that's what I like to do. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So he was like, yeah, yeah, go for it. Go for it. And uh, um, I ended up doing two sets of layouts. I did some ice cream characters um, with like ice cream heads. And then I did some, uh, I did uh, the cranky which is referred to as the cranky where it was a spray paint top and it came off with a cap and uh, it made total sense. Cause I was doing these syringes at the time and they were, they were old Krylons. And I, I was like, you know what? I want to, want to bring some of that graffiti stuff back into toys because it, it kind of went out and I wanted to bring it back. So I uh, designed my particular design, which was, um, the spray paint character, which is now called the cranky. And uh, when I did it, we were only going to release one, you know, it was only going to be one released figure. And um, it quickly turned into three figures. And then my name used to be where the Krylon uh, logo is. It used to say Sket one and they wanted to remove that. Uh, Paul wanted to remove that, of course, because Paul doesn't like when, artists take front and center on their project project, like a name. I remember Tristan telling me a story about that. And uh, so um, they named, we, you know, we shot ideas back and forth. And of course it was just the mending of Krylon and uh, Janky. So you got a cranky, nothing really. Oh, wow. <laughs> we learned, we learned yeah. something. I didn't know. Okay. Nothing yeah. really hardcore or brilliant about it. It was just, Mending two words together. It's just so, the first um, three letters of four, four letters of the word sketch, you know? Yeah. Yeah. There you go. So, uh, so go from there. Um, so did you we, manage to uh, you compromise with the logo thing or not? What's that? Did you manage to compromise with the logo thing with your, with the sketch logo? Well, yeah, I totally understood it. You know, at the time I wasn't like, I wasn't like, I get it. You know, I had my throw up on the back of the head, so I wasn't really like, you know, I had my tag on the foot, you know, and I was coming out with three figures. So I wasn't really like my ego wasn't like, no, it's got to have the sketch one across it. You know, I was like, okay, cool. You know, and uh, um, yeah, we moved forward putting the, uh, the three colors into production. And then halfway through production, um, you know, I got my contract and stuff and I read through my contract and uh, um what what made me sign that contract was a stipulation that I owned all the rights to the artwork that was presented in the exhibit. And of course, in the exhibit was my three designs. So redesigning the head 
of uh, the cranky. Um, in law, it's called a derivative of work. So basically, a uh, derivative of work is you have an original of something, and then you take that and you derive a new piece of work from that particular work. Mm -hmm. The owner of that work is the creator of that work. So this allowed me to copyright that work. And under contract, I had all the rights. So I did that. Um, because of my past and things that I've been and had to go through, you learn these things as an artist through trial and error. Um, I've had projects in the past that, you know, uh, characters have been under uh, copyright and um, you're allowed derivative work from that character. So uh, if somebody owns that particular copyright, you can get around it by changing that character and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. um, there's aspects to a bunch of my characters that I've made abstract to get away from certain characters. Um, my face, that is basically my brand now, my little eyes and my little mouth, um, came from my characters. But that particular face in itself is its own piece of artwork. So being an artist, um, we don't really think about these things, like who owns the rights to things and, you know, who's in control of certain particular pieces that you do you know we're just excited about making toys but as somebody that might not be doing this full time you have to be very 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 conscious of what you're designing and who you're designing it for there's a big difference between producers and artists um, producers don't have any assets and artists have all the assets and the brand uh, coming together in a relationship and making something together is all well and good. And I live for it. I've worked with big people. I've worked with small people and I love it. I mean, that's what makes our community, our community is the producers do what they do and the artists do what they do. But at the same time, it has to be fair. Everything has to be fair for the relationship to like, just be cool, yeah. you know? I mean, I've done a ton of work on a handshake and nothing ever happens. Nothing ever happens. Everybody's cool with each other. Mm -hmm. You know, I get paid, I get samples, this, that. I do events, you know, they bring me out, they, they put me up and, you know, there's no contracts. There's no, there's nothing. It's just, you know, human to human and everybody's like super cool. And then there's shady shit that goes down. You know, and, and, and I would also say there's a difference between work for hire, like working in a design firm. You know that there's a difference between work for hire and creating work for somebody else's use and capacity, and partnering on something and creating artwork for that purpose. Absolutely, and you know that's got to be laid out into a contract. I remember yeah. when I was at Bad Juju, and the reason why Bad Juju fell apart is a bunch of different reasons, but I remember that they tried to, after like two or three years of being in production, they probably asked every single person that worked for Bad Juju to basically say, whatever you design for Bad Juju is property of Bad Juju. Mm. You know, whatever, like, and it wasn't even just design, it was whatever you designed on their computers. Oh. So if you oh. had a, if they gave you a laptop and you went home and you did something outside of work on this particular laptop, they owned it under contract. Now that was a shady stipulation. Wow. You know, and that's the thing. A lot of these businesses and a lot of people that are around these businesses are aware of what they can grab from certain people. And you have to have knowledge. Not everything is cool. Not everybody's cool. Bottom line, not everybody is cool. <laughs> you know there's people out there that do shady shit every day and you know the best thing i heard is you know um there's criminals in every industry mm -hmm. you know when you think about a criminal and you think about you know shady shit that people do they're not just you know on the street you know doing their street thing they're in every industry everything they're in law mm -hmm. enforcement they're in politics they're in 
you know, they're in, <laughs> working at a supermarket. It, take your industry and it, it sucks as a human being to think that there's, you know, undecent people out there. I don't think any of us want to think that about humans, but right. we all know that they do exist and they're shitty. Right. You know? Especially so, in a world that feels like a community and is like approached as a community. Well, well, or a love for something. Like I know we've grown over the last 20, 30 years, but we're still small. We're oh, still absolutely. a small community, you know? And, uh, and, uh, you know, I, I did projects for a kid robot and I know other people did. And all we got was toys. Mm -hmm. You know, we would only get 25 toys, you know, now, now me and you both know that those toys cost about $2 to produce. Right. Well, you know, so the, maybe, maybe, the, maybe, maybe back in the day. The, <laughs> I'm talking about a three inch yeah. figure. And if you're, you know what I mean? Yeah. And you're getting 25, you know, right. as a, you know, as payment and stuff, right. you know, and, and, you know, doing design work is, it's, it's, it's not easy, you know, when you have to do 12 or 15 different turnarounds on, you know, a mini series or something like that. Yeah. Christopher Luke said we should write a book on the legal side of art toys. The, the trouble is, is that it's, it's gray. There isn't, there's a lot of grayness still in, in the legality of what, especially around copyright laws. Co copyright and, and, and tra transformation. And derivative and art. And fair use. It, it depends on the judge a lot of the times. And, and on top of that, you have to be aware of the contract you're signing. It could be super vague. Right. You know, it could be like, you know, just so vague that you're like, oh, well, that wasn't covered in the contract. And they're like, well, technically it was because we didn't cover it. Like, you know what I mean? Like, it's just this big wide open net, you know? So, so I think as an artist, you should just... You know, you, I, I know a lot of people are like, well, I can't afford a lawyer or, you know, I can't afford somebody to look at this. And, you know, there's stuff like legal zoom and, and I know a lot of lawyers do, you know, pro bono work, you know, they have to have a certain amount every year. And, um, I just think you should try to, uh, make yourself aware of what you're signing and how you're signing it and what your rights are to our work. And, you, and know. you know, as part of the Design of Toy Awards, we haven't really announced much about this, but we set, we set up a foundation called the Design of Toy Foundation. And so that's a charity organization. And as part of that, we would like to do things like offer legal services to artists so that they have the ability to just get contracts reviewed because it's important to understand. Yeah, trademarks and copyrights mm -hmm. are all stuff that us as artists and creators should be taking dead seriously because, you know, there are people out there that are trying to make money off of you and trying to do it in a way that, you know, with me, it was different. Um, um, I don't think anybody expected the Cranky to be as popular as it was. And once it got popular, that's when everything kind of got muddy. And, um, um, you know, I was, do you know, I came out with, I think, 16 different pieces in a row. And that was looked at as Sket One's toy. Mm -hmm. That's Sket One, you know, his toy. And um, when uh, I think uh, I think it was December of 2019, Huck called me and he's like, oh, um, I just want you to know that we own the shape. And I said to Huck, uh, no, you don't. <laughs> and he said, but we do. And we went back and forth kind of jokingly and sarcastically with each other about it. But I was dead serious. I was like, you don't. <laughs> and uh, and I said, listen, dude, if you guys really want to shape, let's draw up uh, a contract and make things happen. And uh, and uh, it was kind of just left that in that ambiguous discussion. And then all of a sudden they released the 15 inch blank version. And I was like, okay, well, I'll get a cut of that, you know, because it was underneath my contract and I didn't get a cut of it. And then they released the next one. I didn't get a cut of that. They released the next one. I didn't get a cut of that. And then the mini series was coming out and I didn't get a cut of that. 
And that's when I was just like, all right, I have to have a discussion. So that's when the discussion was brought up. Um, I tried to work out something with Paul and uh, we just couldn't come to terms. And uh, I had to take, you know, I had to take the route of the lawyer. And we were in discussions for a year. Um, not me and Paul, just my lawyer and their lawyer. Sounds and good. their lawyer kind of just ignored us. And uh, finally, I got to a point. I was like, all right, you know what? I, I don't want to take this anymore. Like, I, I felt insulted. Mm -hmm. you know? And uh, that's uh, when I went to the Internet, you know, because my big thing is, is that um, a lot of people don't know about this stuff. You know what I mean? A lot of people don't know about contracts and they don't read them or they don't care or they just want to produce stuff. And um, uh, yeah, I, I, I wanted to inform people, you know, so I informed people and I appreciate Let me just take this time to say thank you to everybody who uh, posted and and uh, added super plastic and uh, reposted. Um, you know, I, I really appreciate it because without that pressure, I wouldn't be in the particular spot where I am now, which is we're at the, you know, we're in the negotiation state now. Okay. So we're talking. Yeah. We're, okay. we're moving in a positive direction forward. Awesome. So that's really good that it, it did create a bit of pressure. So it is moving forward, right? So that's well, the thing is, is I don't want to, you know, if I had to go into litigation, I was going to go that far. You know, it's so because stressful. It is. It's, it's unnecessary. Brian you know, like it's unnecessary. It's like you what's crazy is, is that you have this symbiotic relationship where everything's just beautiful mm -hmm. and everything's flowing. And like you, you're you're promoting a product and you're excited about the releases and you're excited about that. It's being you know well received and you're excited about, you know, just the way everything's going. And then something just hit and it was like oh we're gonna do this behind your back and there's nothing you can do about it and I, it was it was disappointing it was straight up disgusting it was like damn man you know it's like really after all everything we just did you know so um it was really frustrating and uh i just wanted to uh you know i worked hard you know i just uh at the end of the day i just I, I want to be able to support the project. I want to be able to promote it. I wanted to be able to, you know, to, to, uh, have it go on. Yeah. And, uh, it was really hard to do that when this negativity was put onto it and it wasn't done by me, you know? So at the end of the day, I'm very happy that I'm at the point I'm at right now. So, mm -hmm. you know, if, if things don't work out, which I hope they do, you know, and then, you know, public pressure will be right back there. Absolutely. Yeah. Kano's asking if you could explain what happened with the NFT drops. So um, the NFT drops, uh, Nifty Gateway, we released, um, uh, we released an initial 10 crankies on the NFT drops. And uh, um, the contract... At the time of the NFT drops, I was very new to NFTs. I think everybody was. Mm -hmm. um, and I uh, overread the contract and I researched the NFTs and stuff like that. And it was a, uh, it was a flat deal. So I, I took the flat deal. And um, after the release of the NFTs, it's, you know, you know how many are sold. You know how much they sell for. So it's very easy to do the math. Mm -hmm. When I realized how much was made, um, I was like, okay. <laughs> mm -hmm. I was like, all right. And then um, uh, for the second, uh, for the second uh, round, the percentage that they offered me, because this time I was like, no, I want a percentage on sales. And the percentages they offered me was just... Uh, insulting it was like because i knew how much they were going to make 
And I knew it was my artwork that was driving uh, the actual uh, release and stuff like that. You know what I mean? It was like my my figure and it was my artwork. Mm -hmm. So Your name. And my, and my name and my brand. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, so uh, I renegotiated uh, that particular contract and uh, I was happy with uh, with that deal and was happy with what we settled on. But then they turned around and they released two more crankies with Jeff Soto and Dalek and I was totally ignored. They didn't give me anything. So once again, they literally just ignored the fact that I had the rights and, you know, that of the contract that I just signed with them. Right. Mm. So there was things where it was just like on my end, just absolute uh, total disregard for me and my artwork. Yeah. And uh, but um, like I said, everything's moving in a forward direction and I'm, I'm, I'm in a much happier place. So we'll see where it ends up, you know. It's great to hear that. Uh, the reason I was touching my phone a second ago is I realized that from a journalistic perspective, maybe we should read the statement that Superplastic had put out just so that there was equal airtime, not equal, but some airtime given. But if, but based on what you're saying, I don't, I, I'm not going to, I'm not going to yeah. read the previous statement from. You mean the one they took down? A day yeah, the one earlier that we, yeah. Yeah, the Paul put out. Yeah. So. If, if Super Classic <laughs> contacts us and asks us to read their statement, we we'll be glad to read uh, a statement publicly because, you know, everyone's watching this show now. So, yeah, you know, yeah. Big, big time. <laughs> <laughs> well, I appreciate I, okay. I appreciate the airtime. You know, I'm not here to uh, talk negative about them or yeah. about our project and what we did together. I'm here to just state, you know, the straight facts and the facts were is that, you know, um, I know what my contract said. I know what copyright I hold. I know um, what trademarks were on my toys. I know, like, I know, I know where I stand. Yeah. You know. Yeah. And, and, and when we talked about having you on today, it was really important to us to say, like, let's have a positive conversation because we do believe in the community and we believe in the positivity behind the artwork. And the full circle, I think, for us is that people who come in to collect the toys get really turned off by the negativity that comes from the economics that drive a lot of it. And it's important to us to like always try and return to a place of like, we do this because we love it. Yeah, no. And, not, I, and we're not here to shit on each other. I have toys that I've designed that have such black clouds over them. Yeah. And, and I hate it, but it doesn't, when I look at the toy, I might be reminded of that particular incident or that particular moment but in the end i'm still you know i'm still happy i created it and stuff i wouldn't necessarily want to do it all over again but you know i mean well, there's I'm, been glad, I'm glad that it's going in a better direction at least man. <laughs> there's been some crappy companies out there i mean yeah you know that was one of the things that miranda wanted to uh to ask you about you just wanted to say you had two words for a sketch did I? Yeah. What were they? I don't know. I don't. I've never met these people. I'll say it, and you guys can Which take it. Weedy weed. Weedy oh, weed. Oh yeah. <laughs> Talk about weedy weed. I never met. But no, I was just gonna uh, say that when we first met, I think it was like you know 2004, 2005 at Toy Fair, and Toy Fair at the time, designer toys had like a whole <laughs> section. There was like things. There was weedy weed, and there was Strange Co, and there was Critter Box, and there was Phony Baloney Scenes Company. And there was Kid Robot, and there was you know all these brands at the time, all these companies that all made really cool figures. That that like some of the figures were amazing and never got released, like Weedy Weed and Critter Box, like Jeff Soto's art, like so many. Yeah, I think about like half the toys that you just mentioned. I mean, honestly, there's like probably maybe, I mean, Kid Robot, Super Seven, were yeah. they around back then? Um, I'm trying to Super think. Super 7 I was a magazine at Yeah, that I don't think that they, they were there, but not as a booth. Alex Party was there. Yeah, I mean, as far as individual artists, I know they've sustained, you know, yes. their careers and stuff like that. But there's a lot of toy companies that have come and gone, and they've come and gone because of right. uh, various things, or it wasn't lucrative, or, or they had problems, or, you know, they were also, you know, uh, you know, you know, Weedy Wheat was just 
Weedy Wheat was one of those things, you know, it was all about contracts and rights to toys. And, um, you know, all I can say to toy artists is read your contracts and make sure you understand everything in those toy contracts because you're responsible. Right. You're, you're absolutely responsible for you signing a contract. You know what I mean? Right. And um, like I said, I've done work that has gone bad with contracts. I have done work that has been absolutely amazing with contracts. I have done work that has gone bad on a handshake and I have done amazing work that has gone great on a handshake. Um, I don't have any insight as into, you know, well, the only insight I can give you is just read your contracts. Just make sure you understand what you're, what you're signing. That's it. Well, on a personal note, I wanted to say thank you for blessing my canvas produced with clutter and i hope that went all right you know (laughs) (laughs) it's been it's been absolutely great there's nothing you know what i mean (laughs) we've had great releases i i love i love working with other people you know i love being able to jump in on projects and you know put my particular style and brand on there and and uh rap stuff um and, and I would say what's really great about your art is like the phase one design across all the different platforms and you put it together and it's just yeah. a beautiful display of yeah. like that artwork and how versatile it is for a really graphic design. It's just amazing. Thank you. Yeah, Thank you. I love it. I really, um, you know, when I first created that for the mural in Long Beach, um, you know, it was just all about color, you know, and, and what color conveys and you know me putting my particular face on that is kind of like it yeah it's it's more of as as the kids say it's a vibe (laughs) (laughs) it's a vibe in the parlance of our times yes it's funny going back through you know the many magazines that you've been in and this whole issue was about weedy wheat this was like the weedy wheat family Yep. Because it was such a, you know, so they were coming out with so many figures and so many artists. Like, this was the whole issue about it. If you don't, you don't own know it, Wee, you need to grab, grab issue number nine. nine. <laughs> and you can read interviews with Mad and Skirt and Kathy Oliver's and Brant Peters and the guy who owned the company. And yeah, history. Yeah. It, it, <laughs> it, it was a time. And I think there's, you know, there's certain companies throughout time. You know that have had their issues and stuff like uh, Weedy Wheat and uh, Mind Style, and uh, you know there's there's certain companies that have uh, left their mark not in a positive way on right. you know. Mind Style seems to have Mind resurrected came itself, back around, but and... not with. Uh, but they they came in a different direction, and they just like, yeah, I remember back in the day with Mind Style. Yeah, you know what? You know what? And it really, it like I got out early. You know, I was out early, but like, you know, uh, Doc, Doc A went through it and, uh, you know, like Doc's like the best person in the world. Yeah. You know what I mean? And anything like, I can't believe like, you know, somebody would do anything to Doc. Like We had him on last week. Yeah. What's wrong with you? (laughs) Dude's a saint, you know? (laughs) Right. We learned a lot about Doc A last week. (laughs) <laughs> yeah, we did. We did. We spoke him for a while. I mean, yeah. I, I've known him for a long time. So, yeah. So, yeah. Yeah, he's a sweetheart. So, I want to yeah. say Edwardian. Am I saying it right? Edw- Edwardian. Edwardian. Yes, not Edward. Edward- not Edwardian. Ed- no, Edwardian. Edwardian. Yes, yes. We asked him if he was Victorian, and he said, "I'm Edwardian." <laughs> so. And we were like, and we looked it up. <laughs> But yeah, judging okay. through all these comments I see uh, coming up and just everything yeah. that I've seen on social media, I mean, the, the outpouring of love and support for you really speaks, uh, you know, and it's uh, it's great to see, you know, this love that, uh, that, that that people have for you and everything that you've accomplished in your career. So, you know, thank you for everything that you that you do and continue to do. Yeah, no, I, I cannot tell you how much it is appreciated, like, because I wouldn't be in the spot I am if if I didn't have the support that I have, you know, I would, I would have, you know, I do marketing, you know, you guys know I do marketing full time and I probably would have just, you know, gone into that back hole, 
and just gone into an everyday designing, you know, maybe once in a while, go out, paint a piece, stuff like that. But um, having support over the years, you know, um, has been really, really essential to keep pushing and to keep going and to keep creating because uh, without it, I mean, I don't know, sometimes it's like talking to a wall, you know what I mean? Yeah. I put out stuff that has been, you know, falling flat, you know, but you can't give up. You got to keep going. You know what I mean? Absolutely. It's like, you never know what's going to be popular and you never know what's going to be, you know, what people dig and what people are going to like and stuff. But um, I, I think within the last 10 years, I'm, I finally found my groove and I'm, I'm just pushing forward with that and trying to develop and um, create my style further, you know? Yeah. So, yeah, but yeah, thank you. So yeah, that's on the super plastic tip. Yeah. Right on. Pace get one. <laughs> so on that note you want to do the lightning round yeah let's do a lightning round and then i have a couple of i've still i have a couple of quite related questions that i want to know about so all right give me some all right we're gonna do a lightning round to break the like seriousness and then yeah we'll right, mix it up and we'll come back yeah, we'll come yeah, back yeah. All right, everybody, get your energy up. Let's do this. All right, I'm All right gonna... let's go. Let's go. All right, All right. Ready? scale Number one. Your first yeah. lightning round question Ready? is: Production toys or custom toys? Pardon? Production toys or custom toys? Uh, custom. Mm. Krylon or Montana? That's an era question. Like, I can't. Like, I wouldn't use Krylon of today. Right. You know, but back in the day, I would use it in a heartbeat. All right. Like it's there's two different formulas. That's an unfair question. Okay. <laughs> right, unfair. unfair. Okay. Well, it's two different <laughs> the Smiths or the Stone Roses? Wow, I have that's to go tough. Smiths. I have to go Smiths. I knew you would. I knew oh, the answer. That's, that's a really tough question. question. That's, a, that's, a, that's a hard question, but yeah. I mean, there's a bunch of groups that you could throw in there. But oh, yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Phasers or lightsabers? Lightsabers. That's. New York or LA? That's Mike. God, they both suck. No. <laughs> <laughs> my my questions. I mean, you know, for Kano, for Kano, I'll say New York. All for right. Kano, I'll say New York. Oh, oh you're gonna. Oh, you, all right. Well, my question. My, my my question is similar to the last one. East Coast hip hop or West Coast hip hop? East Coast hip hop. There you go, baby. There you go. <laughs> I don't know if I'm going to say this all right. I practiced. Great apes or oh, great apes. <laughs> what? I just added to it. What do you mean? I don't even know. Are you saying okay. great ape? Because that's what. Like, Anna Barbera, grape ape? Oh, oh, great. More apes. <laughs> what the fuck? <laughs> right, moving okay, on. moving on. It was, it was so <laughs> good. <laughs> You're going great apes? Good. Good yeah. answer. Good, good, good answer. answer. Good answer. Can we run out questions? Break. This one's stupid. Give me this one. All right. Anyway, I want the... You're just taking all my questions? I want this one. Okay. All right. Fuck, Mary kill. Abraham Lincoln. Gandhi. Princess Diana. <laughs> <laughs> Is there supposed to be a relation? Like, no. who's cool? Uh, no. This I'm going to go with I'm Blame go this Princess all on Tanaka. Mighty Tanaka. I'm going to go with Princess Yeah, sorry. Dye. My bad. Princess Diana what? I'm going to go with Princess Diana. Okay, all of them. Fuck, Mary kill Princess Diana. There you go. Okay. You Have it. you ever seen a UFO? Yes or no? Yes, I've seen three. And in, in, where were they? In LA? Um, all in California. Wow. There's no follow-up questions to Lightning Round. Well, sorry. <laughs> I went to more information. All right. Let's go deeper. Baseball caps or wrestling shorts? Both. That's a night out right there. <laughs> <laughs> Last one, Miranda. Uh, would you rather be abducted by aliens or kidnapped by a Sasquatch? Uh, it, it, it's technically the same thing. So, <laughs> okay. Whoa. And you heard it here first, people. Yeah. Breaking news. Yeah. All right. All right. Um, so, so, New York versus LA. What made you move 
from the East Coast. And and I thought you would go and live in England, to be honest. <laughs> you know what? I spent so much time in England that I was like, all right, I'm good. I'm good. <laughs> it's obvious that I previously lived there in a life. So um, um, trust me, the breakfast still gets cooked up here. Good, good. I still, I still have my fry up. So good. didn't we on sure. a narrow boat in Birmingham? Didn't we go for a fry up on like a, a narrow canal boat? Yep. Every yeah. that was I ate a fry up every morning. Yeah. <laughs> you have to. I, that's what I did in England. That was like the that was like every every morning I woke up and I was like I'm going to get a fry up. We t we took to get to Warwick Castle too. Oh really? Yeah. Yep. I've spent That's many right, days there. Yes. Fun yes. times. So yeah. so you moved to LA and then everyone followed you from the East No, Coast. not really. Uh, I was actually, I think, out of the bunch, uh, the third oh. to arrive. Um, well, when 2007, 2008 happened mm -hmm. and the economy took a shit, yeah. um, it, it, New York kind of dried up as far as like a creative mecca center that it was. Mm -hmm. um like it, it felt like all the creative jobs just kind of like disappeared and um uh at that particular time i know shane left and he moved to la and he was working uh for um art in the streets and um and then kano left kano moved out there for um animation and stuff and then uh I was just like, you know, at that particular time in my life, I, I know I needed to move, like, you know, especially for doing uh, what I was, you know, wanting to do, which was mm -hmm. further my art career. I was like, I have to move. And then uh, I ended up doing a mural job out in um, like Laguna Beach area. And that's where I met uh, my partner that was into doing bad juju. And he was like, you know, do you want to come out here? And then he pitched me, you know, the job of being the uh, creative director of Bad Juju. And I was like, I can't pass that up. You know, right. I was like, I have to, I have to take that. Yeah. So that's why I moved. You know, I moved out here for a job and for life and friends. And um, it was a big deal at yeah. the time, you know, because I was like, what? By that time, I was... 40 so yeah it was a big move yeah it was a big move but um i want to change it for the world i yeah. i love i love the west coast and then you got married and had another baby yep yeah yep. you had a star wars themed wedding right yep i had a star wars themed wedding um my wife uh jamie um is in the 501st which is a charity group that um they do uh Basically, they're sanctioned by Lucasfilm to wear uh, screen correct uh, costumes, and they do charity work. That's so cool. they do do everything from you know visiting kids at hospitals to you know events and uh, yeah. So all those people helped us with our wedding. That's which amazing. Was, which was really cool. Mom um, got married by Darth Vader. Had uh, Boba Fett up there keeping watch, and uh, we had stormtroopers on guard. And um, that's rad. Yeah, it was so awesome, absolutely awesome. And it's funny because your your wedding goes viral. Yeah. You know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> like there's members, and like I forgot where she said it was like in the Indian 501st or something like that. It was some some place over in Asia, and uh, they were posting it and pictures of the wedding and stuff. So that's that that was cool. Okay. But um yeah, man, I, I, I love the West Coast. I love California. Uh, I wish I didn't have to leave, but to run a business in California in this day and age is really, really hard. Right. Their taxes are just oh my god. I can imagine. Just brutal. So brutal. now you're in Vegas. Yep. And how'd you find Vegas? Like you like, well, like, like living there? Same. Yeah, it's it's basically the same. Vegas is small. You know, everybody knows Vegas as the Strip, and I live about 15 minutes west of the Strip. 
And uh, I've been down to the Strip like twice since I've been here. And it's to visit people who are visiting Vegas. So, right. And that's the other great thing. Um, a lot of stuff happens here in Vegas. Um, there's a lot of trade shows. Um, yeah. You know, they have a Comic-Con. And um, everyone is always like, oh, I'm going to Vegas. Yeah. So we actually get to see everybody that goes to Vegas. You know, when I was in Southern California, I didn't see that many people where I would see people at events in L.A. and stuff like that. But, um, you know, everybody comes here. So it's always nice to like somebody to hit you up and be like, oh, I'm in town. Why don't you come down and get dinner or something? You know, so that's cool. That's great. That's great. That's cool. Let me ask a quick logistical question. How long do we have you for? Oh, yeah. When do you have you? It's um... it's 722. About you have you for about another twenty minutes. Okay. Cool. So do you want to do? Well, let me. I want to know about. Do you want to do toy tank? Yes. Yeah, yeah, but I just okay. want to know about. Okay. Let's do. Let's do <laughs> we're going to talk. Right. For... I have a couple more questions about like licenses and and working on toy licenses because you've worked on quite a few you know big license okay. products and I yep. know a lot of our audience would like to know about how that works and whether you find the, the constraints of working on a license like a a brick wall or whether you enjoy the boundaries that they give you. Well, going back to the whole rave scene, like, you know, taking over licenses for flyers and for clothing and stuff like that. And, you know, logo flipping and having fun with licenses and stuff. Um, uh, not the legal way right. um, was where I came out of. And then, you know, growing up in the marketing world and doing designing with marketing and stuff, you you know, you clearly know when they have their, you know, brand ID, the, what you can do, what you can't do. Don't do this. Don't it's do that. In the book. <laughs> <laughs> Make sure you have two E's to the left and right. And you right. Know. <laughs> so um, working with licenses, uh, like say Sriracha, yeah. absolutely amazing. Great company. Um, you know, they don't have a marketing company. Like they don't have any marketing. They don't do, you know, advertising and they don't, it's all by word of mouth. And Sriracha has become this, you know, grassroots, amazing sauce. And, you know, when I first met the owner, I met him at an art show in uh, downtown LA. It was at the Chinese American museum and it was to honor Tapatio and Sriracha. And I put a dunny in uh, my custom dunny. And I put my, um, I put three different uh, colored uh, Sriracha extinguishers that I customized. And um, uh, from that particular show, the owner of Sriracha wanted that artwork. So I brought the artwork to him when the show was over. And, uh, um, you know, he asked me what I wanted for the artwork. And I said, to use your license. And he said, go right ahead. I love what you do. That's amazing. Go right ahead. So through doing that, I was able to do toys and stuff like that. And, you know, we would get them samples and stuff. And, you know, and they've always been just a breeze to work with. And I love everybody at the company. And the owner of Sriracha is a brilliant. David is just, the, the dude's just amazing. He built his own factory. He designed his own factory. He he designs his own machines. He like the whole system of Sriracha is just done by him. That's awesome. You know, and yeah. it, it's, he doesn't, the only person he relies on besides himself is the farmer that grows his peppers. That's it. That's, 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 right. that's, that's so yeah. he's super, he's super like brilliant and just an incredible person. Yeah. And he gets it. Like, I think yeah. that's the thing. I think when, <laughs> and Jinro was the same way. You know, they get it. Right. And if they get it and they get what you're doing and they get and they understand uh, what somebody like myself brings to the table. Um, it's easy. They, you know, and the end result is to bring in, of course, new people. Yeah. To, you know, their particular brand or what they're about. Then it, it works great, you know. You know, yeah. there's there's brands out there that I basically, you know, I mean, look at ketchup, you know, yeah. I would love to work with Heinz. I've been oh. I've been, you know, flipping Heinz for like 10 years now. Right. 
That was going to be my question. What is your dream collaboration? Well, always call me. <laughs> yeah. Sometimes licensed products just take a really long time because of licensing, like rules and regulations. So it's really fun to hear projects that are straightforward because the people understand. Yeah, always, even, yeah. even the beer can I did with um, Jinro, the height beer can, which was height, but on top of it, it was the Dodgers. And then on top of it, it was Sket One. You know, just, it was also like a fun, <laughs> super dope project. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> 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 coming in. You know, I do. <laughs> no. <laughs> I've, I've always thought it was interesting looking, you know, right back at the birth of the designer toy Love scene <laughs> and looking at people like toy to r and then looking at American companies, the brands that worked with toy to r really understood and they worked with every brand. And it was like just people over there understood how the two went together and that it created a lifestyle. And that is hard to persuade brands here that it's actually a positive experience. Yeah, you know, brands are particular, and if, if they don't understand what you're talking about, you know, if they don't understand, oh, what is this toy? What do you mean, right. final toy? And, you know, I don't get it, you know. With, with Jinro, and we were discussing the Dunny, you know, they were like, oh, you know, we're going to get the Dunny. And I was like, I was like, listen, buy all of them. I said, go to Kid Robot, license the Dunny buy every single one of them and have it for yourself. Yeah. And I was like, and that's the only way to get it. And he was like, why? And I was like, because the whole thing about collecting toys is the rarity of the toy. And I was like, if you guys are going to just give these toys away yourself and they can't get it any other way, this is a perfect way to make your toy super, super like just highly collectible. Yeah. I was trying to explain it to them. And they were like, what do you mean? And like, I had to go on and like show that, like I had to talk about numbers and I had to talk about like uh, events and toys that were, you know, sold at events and, you know, toys that you can only get. Like I remember uh, kid robot did a, what was it? A Samsung dunny? Or something like that. And you could only get one if you, you know, got the phone or something like that. Right. Remember the Taco Bell Dunnies? <laughs> <laughs> you can reach them right there. Yeah. Oh, Miranda and I. Were, we'll yeah. pull this one out because it was the most of a ripoff of, of Mazda's design. <laughs> whoever, whoever was like, yo, let's do this. <laughs> at Taco Bell, we, yeah, we were, out of their minds. There, there should have been somebody at that table was like, "This is a terrible <laughs> idea." We were still living in the city at the time, yes. And um, do you remember Kid Robot got a, like a truck and parked it at the end of Soho and was like, "There was a hashtag." I can't kill, kill it was. false vinyl. No, no, it was. Something, it was. Yeah, it was kill, kill false vinyl. Yeah, they had T-shirts and they were giving away stuff to try and like circumvent this whole thing. It was crazy. Yeah, so fun. we went to we had to go to a Taco Bell in Queens, and we bought them all. Yeah, yeah. We actually, got the run of them. I think my brother has a whole set. Yeah, yeah. But then, yeah. Yeah. The Dalek design. But then, <laughs> Kid, Kid Robot kind of turned around and and licensed their product to um oh shit Sonic what? Sonic yeah and that Wait, was that's, like that's recent history. that was that is recent history but that was like kind of a sideways move. that was another thing it's like you know like. Yo, I'm right here. Like, you know, that's what yeah. I do. You know what right. I mean? Yeah. That's that's what I yeah. do. And 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 you know, I could I could have flipped those toys so hard. Uh -huh. Yeah. You know, I'm just like, man, yeah. opportunity missed. Like <laughs> but I get it, you know, they, they have budgets and you know, they have to take shortcuts and Kid Robot is a different company now. They're not they're not Kid Robot. We love yeah. you, Kid Robot, if you're listening. We love you. <laughs> yes, but they've, they've changed. Not the same. No. Not the same. They've changed. No. Oh. Absolutely. And I don't hold it to, you know, they got to do what they got to do. So yeah. I get it. Yeah. You know? 100%. We could have a whole it's episode. Like, it's like your friend that had to get a job. Yeah. Right. Or you know, <laughs> got married and had a kid and can't yeah. come out and party anymore. Right, exactly. <laughs> Kid Robot got pregnant. And 
Yeah. <laughs> yeah. We could have a whole episode talking Talk, about the ups yeah. and downs of people robots. Exactly. So, with um, love. Yeah. With love. But we should do Toy Tang. But before we do that, what advice would you give anybody that's just starting out as an artist in this industry? Apart from reading the contract. It's so, what's that? Apart from read your contract, obviously. <laughs> <laughs> that's the number one advice. Well, the thing is now is, you know, it's it's changed a lot. And at the end of the day, artists today don't need producers. Right. You know, technically we don't. You know, there's all this equipment out there that we don't need producers. We can just put out our own stuff, you know, and, and, and you know, we can promote our own stuff. We can create our own stuff. We can do limited runs. We could do, you know, we could do resin. And, I mean, you know, if, if you have the money to uh start the equipment even if you don't you could you could go out and buy just sculpty and sculpt stuff and paint it and sell it you know it's 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 changed you know like when i was doing customs first doing customs it's changed oh yeah you know and and when i was doing production work it's changed you know i just ended up to, you know i'm me personally i'm i'm gonna start producing more of my own stuff because you know i have the means to do it now and Right. I have the knowledge to do it now. And I have, you know, I have situations that I've been through to, to that have taught me how and when to do it and what to do it, you know, and, and, and what I should focus on and where I shouldn't focus and stuff like that. So I feel like anybody getting into it, um, um, research, you have tons of YouTube videos that you could watch. You have um, being an artist is not just, oh, you're an artist. You have to learn marketing. You have to learn. Um, you have to learn fucking video now that Instagram has decided. Yes. They want yes. you. <laughs> <laughs> you have to learn like there's a ton of stuff just besides being an artist, you know, and the most important thing is you have to have passion for your own work and you have to have motivation. I know a lot of people that will get an idea and get psyched up and, you know, spend two days or a week on it and then just decide, eh, you know what, I don't, I don't want to do this, you know? So you, you can't give up that easy. You got to have, uh, you got to go for it. If you're going to go for it, just, yeah, just take the time to research. Right. And, you know, if, if you want, you know, if you want to get into sculpting, then, research sculpting and research tools and research this and research the best material. And the internet wasn't around when this all first started. And I mean, it was, but not like yeah, it is. No. It definitely, it wasn't really when I first started collecting toys and looking for stuff. It was no, there were no resources for that stuff really. So I just, I would say, yeah, just, just research, you know? Yeah. I would also say there's a lot of space for everybody. Oh yeah, definitely. So, like, Definitely. I love, I love walking through designer con now. Yeah. And I, I mean, I haven't been to five points, but I know it's the same exact thing. And you just see independent people, you know, doing independent customs, yeah. you know, and they got their booth and they got, you know, their whole thing up and going and, and yeah, you might not, not have heard of them, but you know, they're doing it, you know, Absolutely. they're doing what you wanted to do back then. Right. You know? Right. Right. Well, so on that note, advice. on that note, we have a new segment that we're bringing on to Clutter Live. We're calling it what? Go on, you do it. I would have said no. No, I would thank you to Skep. Well, we're sharing. not letting go of Skep. Okay, don't go. We're not letting go of Skep. <laughs> he's going to bounce maybe halfway through. So I got about twenty minutes. Yeah, right. no, so, okay, we'll yeah, yeah, so we'll, we'll, we'll thank Skep at the end. All right, keep so Skep, we're bringing on this new segment. It's perfect for what we, the conversation we were just having. We're calling it Toy Tank. Our idea is to bring on up and coming creators who want to pitch us an idea and we're going to give them feedback. Right. Ask for advice. So, so I want to go ahead. Go ahead yeah, so this is a, a guy named Grant Saunders. He, uh, he goes by Carolina Cool Cat. He's down in uh, the Carolinas. I can't remember which north or south, but uh, he's from one, one of them. them. And, like this yep. dude is uh Super nice. He came into the gallery when you guys were away on vacation and he showed me some of his toys and my mind was blown. I was like, yo, this dude is doing it. He's up and coming. He's making some really exciting stuff. So, you know, without further ado, 
Let's bring him on for uh, for a can pitch. We see can, we, can we see our toy tank? There we go. Toy tank logo. Oh, it's cut <laughs> off. It's fine. It's fine. It's slightly, slightly cut off. <laughs> yeah. nice. Toy tank. Toy tank. What's Woo-hoo. up, Carolina? Oh, hey. Now. Ahoy. Hey. Ahoy. Welcome. There he Welcome. is. Welcome. Nice to meet everybody, and good to see Alex again. Everybody's wearing black T-shirts. I didn't get the memo. I'm sorry about that. But, uh, <laughs> We're dark and moody. Don't worry about it. Yeah, Not, yeah. <laughs> so... Uh, well, I guess no, I'll just you, show off my stuff, well, right? Well, we need to know it's North Carolina or South Carolina. North. North okay. Carolina. Central right, North, North Carolina. Carolina. Yeah. Tell us a little bit about yourself and then show us your You, have, you have five minutes. Yes. Five, five minutes. minutes. Okay, gosh. There you go. Um, well, I and, just and we recently got into uh, this scene, probably within the last three years. Um, I was dabbling in it, uh, you know, 2019. And then, you know, everything hit in 2020 and the time that we were in quarantine um, was a great time for me to really learn the ins and outs of uh, silicone and resin and stuff like that. And um, by early 2020, I'd gone to my first uh, indie art show, which was uh, assembly required um, in Asheville, North Carolina. And just the the encouragement and support and everything um, from the artists I met there really made me want to get further into the industry. So, uh, or the the scene. So here I am, you know? Um, Yeah, I'm 22. I'm pretty young uh, (laughs) compared to uh, a lot of other artists. Um, What are you trying to say? It's it's, it's, (laughs) right, Cool Cat. Show, Show us your toy, Cool Cat. Yeah, All right. Show us the um, so here's my main. Uh, okay, my camera's over here. My main character, uh, my sort of signature character that everybody's latched onto. Um, he's aptly named Anchor Fist, and um, he's five inch scale, I'd say. Um, big influence on me behind me is uh, Jesse DeStazio, Toy Pizza. So That's a good friend of Clutter. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, he's. I just met him when uh, he had Toy Pizza Con. Uh, yep. Great to meet him. Uh, so this is uh, Glyos compatible. Um, okay. Out of resin. It's not. So right here's another one that has you know erratic arms on him. And yeah. uh, I was telling um, I was telling Alex I don't have any of my other additions on me right now. Um, We're but for it, bro. We yeah. <laughs> there we go. Okay. Cool. Nice. Um, this, this is, is a cool. most popular edition. Uh, not really straight up painted, but it's you know oxidized and um, stuff like that. It looks like he's been out in the water for a while. And then my newest sculpt, I'm going to have a release of soon on my website, is uh, the squash, and he uh. is flies compatible as well. And uh, five points articulation. He's uh, five and a half inches tall. So um, he's got, I don't know if you can really tell, he's got a black wash on him. And uh, his eyes glow in the dark red. That's super yeah. dope. Talking clutter's language. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, got a sticker to go along with him. And oh, everything. Nice. So, yeah. yeah. Nice. And uh, here's the sort of. Um, mascot of my name uh try to do like a little lucky cat this is all original sculpt and uh yeah the, uh, i m- forgot to mention here's the master sculpt of anchor fist i sort of did like a kinder kit bash uh okay. you know how they did uh with uh adventure people back when they were pitching the star wars figures um i sort of took that idea and wanted to put that into my figures so you know i i took a bunch of stuff together uh, with an aesthetic in, in mind and yeah, just Milliput and a bunch of other parts and stuff. Nice. So, yeah. Very English of you to use Milliput. Nice. Milliput? Yeah. Very English. Yes, it is very Where'd English. Where'd you learn about Milliput? Real, yeah. <laughs> All right. I just want to say that yes. I love it. Just keep doing it and Thank keep you. messing with shit and like keep expanding on, uh, like your technique and you know um a big thing is materials you know play around with different materials and stuff like that but i I, I think it's really really dope and thank you i appreciate I that. Wanted to get in and say i gotta go 
So. All right. Well, thank All you right. so much. Nice to meet you. Thank I really you. appreciate we'll, it. We'll have you back because we could talk for uh, days. Of course. Yeah. I'll come back anytime. <laughs> anytime. Thank thank I really appreciate it. Thank you, Thanks, Scott. Skip. All right. Thank you. Everybody thank take you, care. Bye. Thank you again. Bye-bye. Right. So do you have any – that was great. Sket loves your work. Yep. Do you yes. have any specific questions for the board? Or the comments. Lots of people love the Sam Squatch. Lots, yep. of, lots of great yes. feedback. Lots of fire is signs. it called the Sam Squash? Everyone's calling it that, so I'm guessing it is. It's, it, it's the Squash. The it's squash. just the Squash. Yeah, like the Thing or the Hulk. It's like the Squash. Nice. I just don't. I know. But, uh... like, <laughs> like, yeah. like, um, like the Courgette. Oh, okay. I'll go. That was, <laughs> what was that? That's it. He just made an English joke. That was an English joke. Yeah. In, 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 in England, they don't have, <coughs> excuse me, I got to tickle my throat. In England, they don't have zucchini. They have, they have squash. I was making yeah, a squash yeah. to yeah. zucchini to courgette joke. Yeah. It's very yeah. clever, Jeff. <laughs> what did you say to me? I, I didn't understand what you said, CZ. Very, very clever. I like it. Oh, thanks. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, go fuck yourself, Kimberg. Uh, <laughs> Thank you. So, what so, I love about uh, these boys. I'm oh, sorry. But what I love about these toys is like when you came into the gallery, you had a couple on you and it gave me the opportunity to like hold one and like really check it out. And like, yeah. and I was immediately blown away. The quality was top notch. You know, your paint jobs are fucking awesome. And like, you're really doing it. And like, it's, uh, it, it's just really nice to meet like a, a young designer such as yourself who's like, you know, who just took that initiative to like go forth and, and just do it and, and put yourself out there. And I think that that's really one of the hardest things to do. And one of like the uh, the best things to do is to just take that first step and like enter a whole new world and just say fuck it and do it. And you're doing it, dude. And like that's yeah. so like inspiring to me. So like thank you for doing it. Oh, yeah, thank you. Well, I appreciate the opportunity to be on here, and it's it's been really fantastic doing this and everything. Yeah. That's good. The oh, making yeah. it glass compatible is super smart. That's a whole world. Of those of you who don't know Glass, go check it out. It's yeah. a whole world of figures that can then interchange with each other. And, and if you don't know Matt Dowdy. Yes, we should get Matt Dowdy on. Oh, yes, oh please God. get Dowdy on here. Oh I met God. him. Oh, okay. that's this is that's, right. that's a really good. I'm writing that one down. We'll get Dowdy on. I oh, met him God. when I was in Beacon for Toy Pizza Con, um, and oh, ago, right? just talking to him was was, was phenomenal. He here this year? Was Matt Dowdy here this year? Yeah, he was was oh, here for. Um, Are you serious? <laughs> I'm sorry, I didn't mean to rat him out or anything. Oh my we god! Just, no, we weren't here. We were on vacation. I'm yeah, sorry. I love. Yeah. Are we if we weren't on vacation, we were like just we coming back and decompressing from being away. Yeah. I love Matt exactly. Dowdy so much. Oh my god, he's I'm really really cool. Really, really cool. Really yeah, he's such a such yeah. a good. <laughs> And his his encouragement, and he told me that he had uh, my anchor fist on his desk. Um, I Did was he, a little. I was a little starstruck. Um, <laughs> but... Did he tell you that he wanted you to sign a derivative works contract? I'm sorry. <laughs> no, not yet. <laughs> that was a sketch joke. There you go. That's yeah. awesome. Um, so yeah, do y'all have any comments? Uh, personal, personal comments on uh, you know my stuff, or any uh, critiques or That's opinions? Or... So tight. I mean, it works tight, man. Have you... Thank you. This watch is that is that hand sculpted or is it? Um, I and then three D printed and then so I used um I don't remember what brand it is but it's like Hobby Store you know how they have figures of like animals or unicorns or whatever so I used a Yeti figure and a uh, Bigfoot figure and I cut them up and right, so like kit bashed them up and like yeah, yeah. and then I did I did all his uh, fur and there's these little back details I added like little uh, yeah. leaves and there. Those are all milliput. Um, I had to do this articulation from scratch. Uh, all the glyphs nice. articulation from scratch. So I had to like cut it and sand it really flat and add the pegs and everything like that. So yeah, it's it's another kit bash um, yeah, figure with cool. sculpting on it. Very cool. So yeah, have you have you thought about doing carded figures? Um yeah yeah I have a couple friends that do uh, like screen printed cards and I, I definitely want to collaborate with them. Um, right I now, just say, I just... you wish Jeremy Mattel. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, uh -oh. Jeremy said he's also 22 years old. Oh, hey, hey, we're in the same class. Then. <laughs> <laughs> um, he, he wishes, but yeah, right now I do like little but, header cards and, and uh, poly bags and stuff like that. Um, so, but yeah, I would definitely like to do something parted. Yeah, I think that like part of 
what makes action figures really cool for me is the backstory. And a lot of the backstory makes it to me through the packaging. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So, yeah. And I, I definitely have stories uh, for these guys. Um, you know, a lot of North Carolina is very, very rich with uh, lore and history, you know, on the coast, uh, you know, Anchor Fist, we, we have the lost colony, the mystery of the lost colony. We have Blackbeard. And then in the mountains, we have a bunch of cryptids and the brown mountain lights and everything like that. So I'm definitely trying to connect the North Carolina lore with these stories. But um, hopefully I can eventually get a comic book out or something of these dudes. Um, so, yeah. That's so cool. Shout out to Assembly Required. I love that that's where you found like a home. I think the bootleg community in particular is one of the like most welcoming and like we'll tell you everything of how to do it and we'll support you and we'll show each other's works. And I think yeah. that's really an awesome thing. And, and yeah, yeah that's such a direct art form that people can come in and be known very quickly. Yeah. Because true. there's like such such a small barrier to entry. So mm -hmm. if you're good and you're great, everyone can find out about you very quickly. And and I think that's really positive. Yeah. And uh, this year, February this year, was my uh, first time displaying my stuff um, at Assembly Required. And uh, that was fantastic. I sold out of my anchor fist that I brought the first day. Um, and awesome. it was it was really, really flattering. And I got to meet so many people from, you know, the East Coast and made a bunch of really good friends. And I'm so excited to go back uh, next year. It's, it's really highlighted my year. Very cool. Awesome. Awesome. Well, awesome. well, thank you for coming on. Yes. Carolina. Thank you for having me. It's an honor. Toy Tank person. Yes. If you want to take part in Toy Tank and show us your work, ask for a critique, promote your work, drop us a line, drop us a comment, and we'll get you on the show next week. Thank you so cool. much. Thank you, Cool Cat. We'll stay yeah. in touch. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Cool. That was our yes. first Toy Tank. That was the first Toy Tank. We're going to have more it went, people. On it this went time. well. Yeah. It's fun. He's sweet. I really <laughs> loved his it. accent. Yeah, it's great. Yeah, yeah. That'd be good. Yeah, we'll we'll do we'll like this was a trial. Okay. It could have gone really bad. We could have been like, hey, yeah. and could have been like, hey, and then it could have been the awkward. And there's a bunch of people that are in this chat that we need to get on the show. Yes. Like Jeremy Maddow. We need to yes, get you. We need to get you, like and Matt you, and, you, and, and you. Skat and Kano all together. Is that tease? Yes, I know. Oh tease. my god. Like the original Holy shit. what I forgot to bring up with Sket is that like the original Toy Mafia and a lot of them are here. Wow. He's, he's original Toy Mafia. Wow. Sket's original Toy Mafia. Mad's original Toy Mafia. So cool. Well, this um, was an awesome evening. Yes, it was. Thank you for everybody for joining us, for commenting. Um oh we're gonna do a, oh we didn't do a snake peek with Sket. Oh shit. Oh shit, we promised you, so we should still do it. Yes, right? yes. We'll just do a quick yes. snake peek. because it was hidden. I know. I was like, I where is it? I was looking for it on the table. So we have some more Cambots coming out with Skia, which we're super excited about. And this one is is one of our favorites. This is the Doom Vader. And he has an awesome little cape that attaches. So you're probably familiar with Skia's Doom Vader concept. We've developed it as a Cambot. It's ready. It's. I would think we'll see it in 20... Like we're spacing things out. So yeah. I would think we'll see it in 2023. But, but it's peak. ready to go. And it's rad. Yes. So and well. also, Sorry. don't forget that we have a special giveaway as well. We do. We're yes. giving away the pink Skep Formula One. So these are sold out. Yeah. This is like one of just a couple that we have here in our AP back area. We'll so, get Skep to sign him maybe. Yeah. I'm sure he wouldn't yeah, we'll do mind. something cool. Yeah. So we'll figure out how we're going to give it away. You, go, like, you have to comment for a chance to win. Hashtag Skep One giveaway, I think. Okay. And, and it's you have to comment on YouTube? Yes, yeah, so you comment on YouTube in the chat. There's hashtag Skate Because we're trying giveaway. to drive that interaction on YouTube. Yeah. Come on. Skate giveaway, and then we'll pick the winner next week on that show. That toy looks great with your hair, too. Hashtag CZ sexy. C oh, C come on, CZ. What's yeah. up? Woo! Woo! All right. Awesome. Okay, nice. Well, and the other thing is we're having a drop tomorrow, and you want to. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Tomorrow is the Creon. The kick, kick in, the, in bucket. the bucket. Double cast. Made right here in New York. Yeah. So this is available at 11 a.m. EST tomorrow on our website. And what else? Anything else? Susie, you got anything this week? You want a promo? No. no. Next no. week is the opening of Planet Rainbow Sparkles next Saturday, a week on this Saturday. Um, so that's going to be awesome. Over 100 artists in a rainbow display on the wall. It's probably 
our most beautiful show of the year. Miranda does the Miranda. wall herself. She yeah. labors over it. It's yeah. awesome. It's dope. It's, fun. it's really it's always a beautiful. Fun. Yes, Miranda dials in the sequence. It's yes. dope and awesome and, and beautiful. And the opening of Jagbot, which is going to be, is that the first glass show that's yeah. happening at? Uh, yes. Wow, yes. The, so the premiere glass show at Clutter, which is super exciting. Jag is an uh, internationally recognized glass artist who was well known for his functional glass items. But then he's also created these money bags, which are highly collectible. And uh, so he's going to give us some of those. And then we have some uh, some other original works of his as well. So in club, not in club, in uh, the same time as Rainbow Sparkles, you can also yes. have Jag. Just don't touch the glass, Alex. Don't no. touch the glass. No, don't, don't touch the glass. The glass. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Glass. I'm not allowed to move any of the glass. I have two. I have to go back to episode one. I have two technical questions about YouTube. Okay. So wait, but King Konga, this show is every Thursday. Yes. Come back. Every Thursday. Tune in. Uh, when people are hashtagging in this chat, is this chat on YouTube? Yes. Or is this chat in this program that we use? This is a classic episode to respond. In YouTube. Well, we can invite them. Do you want me to invite? Should we send an email to Paul? That would be an awkward episode, but... I mean, we've spoken with Paul before. We actually found... Gary Rosansky found a copy of the interview that I did with Paul and and Huck at the five first points. Five Points in Brooklyn, I believe it was, right? It was yes. the first year that we did yeah. it in Brooklyn. And so Gary sent me that, and I screen captured it off of the live feed on, uh, on Facebook. And so we're going to post that on our channel. Uh, I haven't asked. I haven't asked Rosansky. I don't know. I thought we should post it, right. or at least post clips of it. Sure. I'll ask Rosansky for permission. Yeah. Hey, Rosansky. Uh, he's at. Isn't it Designer Con right now? No, nah, no. It's this no? weekend. Is it this weekend. Yeah. Yeah. It's this weekend. Yeah. And um, if you want to read some interviews with Skep from over the years, you can pick up some kind of magazines because this is what we were first and foremost is a a magazine, and but so he's in issue eight, nine, and two. But now we're a. Uh, a video Remember magazine. a video magazine, yes. But print, not print. I keep touching the mic. I don't know if you, you guys can hear it. Read historical facts. Yes. About Skit and how he's... In the time capsule of paper. Yeah, in the time Remember capsule. Remember paper? It's like, my, it's like a dad joke, right? Remember paper? <laughs> Remember magazine? Did you read them? All right. I, All think, right I think we've wound down. Yeah. Yeah. So on that note... I fucking love you, CZ. I fucking love, love you, Tanaka. And everyone who joined in this episode is incredible. We had yes. so many people show up. So much great thank interaction. You, thank thank you. you. This was wonderful. And thank you, Sket, for coming on and it telling us everything. Cool. Like, just really, like, Sket's always so professional, so loving. He's the man. He keeps it real. And it was just a pleasure to have him on. Yeah. So. Great. All right. We'll see everybody next oh. week. Same time, same time. Thank you, everyone. Thursday. Thank you.